Feeling neglected, one of the girls Sam brought with him heads back to camp. Well, that's what happens when you have a non-nudity clause in your contract. When she gets back to camp, she finds the butcher going through their tents. Um, excuse me. Hello? Aren't you supposed to be on the other side of the island or something? There is a strange man going through your fucking tent. You don't ask him questions. You turn around and run away. Hello? Hello? Anybody home? I think the fly thing. After realizing who he is, she tries to run, but he just throws a rock at her. It was a big rock. Sam and the other girl head back to the campsite before the others to find it in shambles. The hell? Damn, I'd say Dawn got a little upset. No, not Dawn. She wouldn't do this. This is probably just wild animals. Unless you're camping at Jellystone Park, I seriously doubt any of the animals know how to unzip your tent. I never thought I'd say this, but I so wish I was watching Yogi Bear right now. Worried about her friends, she convinces Sam to go with her to look for her. Who the butcher didn't kill. Why? Was he worried about the blood? He could have just covered that up with the sand, which I assume he did the first time since no one seemed to notice it and they came to the camp. It's like this movie just insists on wasting the audience's time. Who's I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. While Sam is trying to get some sandy beach action, and I'm not talking about the ground, the butcher really does kill the girl's friend this time. Hearing the screen, they decide they better go look for her, coming face to face with the butcher who apparently has telekinesis because he clearly throws the axe to his right but hits the girl in the chest who is standing right in front of him. Look, physics doesn't work that way. Oh! What manner of sorcery is this? Sam runs off into the woods, and at this point, the movie has gotten so bad it starts critiquing itself. It's just a bad B movie. It's a bad B movie. After killing Sam, we get another pointless development scene involving Dylan's brother Brody and his friend. Come on. How, how are you supposed to know she was allergic to parsley? Because she's your fucking wife. I'm pretty sure that's something you should know. Is this what we've become? Two married guys sitting in a bar, drinking beer, rattling on about our wives. <sighs> Let me ask you something. Ten years ago, where'd you see yourself? Honestly, man, ten years ago, I couldn't see. Okay, if I can be serious for a moment, the point of character development is to get your audience engrossed in the characters, whether it be in a positive or a negative way. This only works if the character development is somehow related to the story you're telling. What do we learn about Brody's friend in this scene? Well, we learn that he's a fuck-up who doesn't pay attention to his wife, which is all fine and well, but serves no purpose to the story. What do we learn about Brody? Well, we learn he's generally unhappy with his life and is a fisherman which only serves the purpose of explaining of why he has a boat. When your character development scene serves no purpose to the story, they just become useless filler and just drags out the movie. Which is a major problem in this film. All the background stories for the characters are simply just that, background stories. So the audience has no reason to be invested in them. They're all just there to kill or be killed. And no matter how good a story idea is, poor execution in your storytelling is always going to be a bust with your audience. But enough about that, back to the review. Because it's getting dark and the other three hasn't come back yet, the Scooby gang decides to go look for him. Well, here's the deal. If we're going to cover more ground, we definitely have to split up, so... You know the last thing I want to do is fuck up this dude Puss Parade, right? <laughs> Would you stop that? All right, listen. You two go north. We're going to go south. We meet back here in an hour. Cool? Cool. Trevor and Hope are the first to come across the butcher, and rather than running away with Hope, Trevor decides to stay behind and fight him, which, of course, leads to his death. Well, this is a first. I've never seen a movie use a day to night saturation on a scene that was clearly filmed at night. If that's the case, you might as well just film it in the daytime. You're right, but then figureheads aren't too difficult to come by. Any idiot can be one. Hope runs into Dinner and Jella and she tells him about the butcher. Dylan calls his brother on the emergency radio he gave him and then goes looking for Trevor while Jenna gives Hope a motivational speech. I will not let you sit here. Hope you have to keep going. What do you think Trevor would be telling you right now? What would he do? He would not let you give up. <laughs> I won't let you give up either. Why did I leave him? Because he loves you and he wanted you to be safe. <laughs> Hope, look at me. We're gonna make it. No, she's not. She's black. Fine, Trevor. Fine, Trevor. Did I realize it's fucking dark out here? It's not like I'm just gonna trip over him. And... What the fuck? 
Well, call me red. I didn't mean that literally. After running around the woods all night, the girls make it to the beach just in time for Hope to get killed. There's a fucking maniac trying to kill us! Just get to the north end, now! <laughs> Brody and his friend make it to the shore and they see the butcher chasing Jenna, so he shoots him with his harpoon gun. <laughs> Unfortunately, this isn't enough to kill the butcher, which leads to him killing Brody's friend. Wait, the water's only waist high? That means Brody could have jumped in the water and saved his friend, but he chose not to. You, sir. Are an asshole. After beating the butcher with a tree stump, they just drive off. The movie then cuts to six months later, where they're both in Stanford, making that whole community college subplot pointless. Where we find that Jenna is still traumatized by the whole experience. Got to get over this. All right, How did he find them? This movie belongs right up there with the Mother's Day Massacres of the World. Bad acting aside, there's nothing appealing or interesting about any of these characters. The movie is filled with uncharacter developing character development and some really poorly chosen camera shots. I've seen film student projects that were put together better than this thing. The worst part is, the name is completely misleading. With a name like Butcher, you expect to see some torture in it or someone being cut to pieces, not some guy walking around with an axe. In fact, the only thing Butcher was 90% of the audience's brain cells. I'm Don Perignon, saving you from getting ripped off.